This stuff is real. I'm going to show you a video here by Dr. David Jacobs, and he's talking about the alien abduction phenomenon and the creation of hybrids. <laughs> suggested that this was a program. There is a reason for this program to be put in place. That's what the evidence clearly points to. What was happening was that people were talking about this reproductive material. People were having sperm taken, they were having eggs taken. focused on hybrids, the reproduction is to reproduce hybrids, and it does appear to be an integration program as crazy as that may sound. Okay, this is a guy at a major university who actually has a course on alien abduction. He started out trying to debunk all this, but in the process, you heard him, he became a believer. And something apparently is going on. Could it be Daniel 243? They, who's they? Shall mingle their seed with the seed of men. They should not cleave together, right? As iron does not cleave with clay. I believe cleave is a marriage term. 
you know, husband, you know, leave his father, mother, and cleave with his wife to become one flesh. And I think it's saying they're not going to do the giving and taking a marriage thing that they did in Genesis, but yet seed is still being mixed together in laboratory experiments. Anytime that I've heard abduction scenarios, it's always the extraction of seed, the extraction of embryos, you know, or, or eggs, and the implantation of embryos, and the removal of fetuses, and you know, all that. It's all very scientific in laboratories. You know, if all they had to do was have sex, well, you know, why all that? Something's going on there, and I believe that that's the connection and the title of my presentation, the Mount Hermon Roswell connection. If you look at the, the alleged crash in Roswell, New Mexico, David Flynn went out there with a team of researchers, I think it was back in 2005. Uh, the actual crash site is not in Roswell, it was further uh, northwest, if I remember right. It was just reported in Roswell. Uh, they went out there in 2005 and discovered that it was directly parallel with Mount Hermon on the 33rd parallel. And when they multiplied the location that they were standing on by the universal constant of pi, it gave them the longitude of where they were standing. 104. I believe that was the beginning of what I call repackaged Nephilim Genesis 6 activity. The Genesis 6 experiment beginning all over again. Because it, then, you know, in the 50s, there was a massive rash of UFO sightings. But that's when all the B-movies started coming out, too. I actually wonder if, how many of you remember the, uh, uh, was it not Orson Welles, uh, the other guy that did the War of the Worlds? Is it Orson Welles? Yeah, it's Orson Welles. The H.G. Wells wrote it. Orson Welles did the War of the Worlds radio broadcast, I think it was in the 30s. Uh, <clears throat> I have that broadcast at home, I've listened to it a few times. It's, it's pretty wild, especially if you put yourself back in a sort of a 1930s mindset. Uh, the beginning of it, they gave the disclaimer. This is a radio presentation. But that's the only time they gave the disclaimer. So if you came home late from work or whatever and you missed the first five minute disclaimer and you turned on your evening news you know, report, like you always did, it sounded like a regular news broadcast about aliens. And the way to describe the alien invaders were they were in the same shape of the water towers. So they're hearing this on the radio, they look out the window and they see the water tower and they all flipped out. You know, it's Stephenville, Texas. You must have been there like forever. But it was like mind control. They were, they were listening to it. It programmed to think a certain way. They went out and looked and they freaked out. And all these news reports came out after that. People went crazy after that. I, I, I can't help but wonder if that wasn't maybe a psyop. Uh, a psychological warfare attempt. Because let's see, let, it's kind of like, let's see how people are going to react when they see a UFO or aliens. Well, in the 1930s, they freaked out, so they made it over that. People freak out, okay? <laughs> Let's try plan B. Let's work, our, work it in, right? So you got Roswell, and then after Roswell, you got all these movies that came out, all through the 50s, right? And they continue, you go into the 60s, 1963, Star Trek, right? Bold to go or no man had gone before him. I meet all these English-speaking humans all over the universe. <laughs> How incredible is that? Right? You know, in the 70s, 80s, and you get to the 80s and, you know, 90s, and you got Independence Day, right? How many of you have seen Independence Day, Will Smith? Right? You know, you went in the 30s, everybody freaks out when you see Alien. You get to Independence Day, and they're on the top of the building with a sign saying, Take me! Take me! Wow! It's worked. I put together a montage of UFO sightings reported by mainstream news. And when I put this together, this is like 2011. It's hard to keep up anymore. I, I have given up on the idea of updating this video because there's so much of it happening right now around the world, and everybody's aware of it now. Okay, you know, it used to be back in the day it was that guy who could floss his teeth with rope. You know, I got abducted by aliens. It took me up in a spaceship. <laughs> right? It used to be the, the crazy guy, right? Yeah, aliens flew billions of light years. They picked you. <laughs> You know, why didn't it take Stephen Hawking or, you know, somebody? <laughs> no, Kelly, you can feel my spaceship. That's the way it was, right? Anytime you ever heard about somebody seeing a spaceship, it was always a crazy nut job. But now everybody's seeing them. I I've seen three of them myself in the last few years. Now, again, I don't know what I'm looking at. I, unidentified flying object. That's what, you know, it's an unidentified object that's flying in the air. 
But here's a video montage of mainstream news reports that I put together that had taken place roughly between about 2009 and 2011. Check this out. A child left baffled by an unexplained circular light seen hovering high over Moscow Wednesday evening. People described it as seeing a wide circular formation in the sky. Scientists from all over the world are trying to figure out what caused a mysterious blue light to spiral in the sky over Norway on Wednesday. As UFO sightings go, this one was as good or as weird as it gets. Early yesterday morning, just before dawn, this appeared in the Norwegian sky. A blue light, small at first, growing into a spiral and then disappearing into what appeared to be a black hole. Thousands of Norwegians bombarded the Meteorological Institute to ask what that light could have possibly been. Some feared it could have been a meteor, others a black hole, and there are even those that thought it could be aliens. A strange spiraling white light was spotted in the early morning sky over Sydney with even skeptical witnesses wondering if it was a UFO. The unusual sight was recorded by hundreds of people from Victoria north to Queensland. A spiral in the sky around a bright light. A UFO in China skies forced Zhaoshan Airport to stop operations on July 7th. Outbound flights were grounded after the unidentified flying object was detected by a flight crew. For now, the UFO continues to be a mystery. Some Chinese residents are on edge this morning after another apparent UFO sighting. It's the second one in two weeks. The first sighting was on July 7th, and an airport had to be shut down. All right, that's a UFO if I've ever seen one. Yeah, the UFO that's undeniable. It, it, the airport had to be shut down after people apparently saw twinkling lights above the airport terminal. 17 flights had to be diverted. The last, the latest sighting happened just two days ago. And people say they saw four lantern-like objects forming a diamond shape in the air, hovering in the sky for over an hour. The mediation expert but say they don't know what it was. It wasn't a plan. Strange and mysterious lights hovering above the East El Paso tonight. It's even more strange. Very similar lights were spotted in Manhattan just two days ago. Above the skies of Northeast and East El Paso tonight, a sight that was a little more than stunning. This is what one of our photographers, Ray Moreno, caught on video. One solitary light that appears to be falling in the sky. But that light suddenly breaks apart into two, then three separate lights. Those lights then just freeze in the air and begin to hover. Eventually, a fourth light can be seen. Then the lights appear to be hovering and then moving in a strange pattern. Then they all disappear. Just two days ago, in the sky above Manhattan, people froze on the street there as they saw these three lights hovering in the middle of the day. And check this out. The three lights are close to each other, then spread out into this triangle pattern. Now, look at the pattern side by side. This from Manhattan and the other tonight in El Paso. I gotta tell you, they do look eerily similar. Up. Is because of a mystery in the sky. Is it a balloon, a UFO, whatever it is? It sure has a lot of people talking. I have a decision for the Jeff Begates is live in Chelsea where crowds have gathered. Jeff, what's this all about? Well, Sade, we don't know. <laughs>
daughters of men that they were fair. And they took them wives of all which they chose. Oh my gosh! There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, what is that? the same became mighty men, which were old, men of renown. Oh my God! Disclosure is very close, and the American people need to prepare themselves very soon for an announcement from our government that there is in fact extraterrestrial presence engaging this planet and the human race. Like I said, it's hard to keep up. Do I update that? Forget it. It's going to be a two hour long video. I was in Kazakhstan uh, twice actually in my um, missionary journeys. In that spot where they, the news reporter was and had the thing in Almaty, that was in, in Almaty. Uh, I, I stood in that location back in 2008, 2006, something like that, I forget which. Uh, so I'm like, wow, I mean, and, and that area, Kazakhstan, that was like the, the USSR's NASA. That's where their space program was. And what, what was that the last thing that came down? I don't know. I don't know if you could see it from back there, but as that thing was coming down, there were a bunch of little dots that were like escorting it the whole time. As it came down and came out in that beautiful starburst pattern. What is it? I don't know. It's an unidentified flying object. But more and more people are seeing these things. Like I said, it used to be crazy talk to talk about a mile-wide spaceship parking over cities. Right? Independence Day or V. It used to be crazy talk to talk about such things. Until a mile-wide spaceship parked over Stephenville, Texas in 2008. Everybody saw it. The mainstream news reported about it. And shortly after that, the United Nations, they, they uh, created an ambassador for aliens. You know, we got all these ambassadors representing different countries around the world. They said, you know what, eventually somebody's going to come here. We need somebody to say, hi, we're from Earth. Who are you? I mean, that's, seriously, the United Nations appointed an ambassador to aliens. In the same year, the Vatican says, yeah, and if they, you know, if they need it, we'll baptize them. It's the truth. That's what they said. But notice it said, if they need it. There's some of the people in the Vatican saying maybe they didn't fall like we did. Maybe they are at a higher level of spirituality and we have something to learn from them. Coming from the Vatican. I'm telling you, things, things are changing. Uh, and even more so, I believe, as the day approaches. Remember what Yeshua said. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Fallen angel activity is increasing and it's only going to get worse as the days draw closer to the return of Christ. 
I mentioned L.A. Marzulli earlier. I love this quote from him. <coughs> Excuse me. He says, UFOs are real, burgeoning, and not going away. He's right. But he, I like something else he says. He says, rebuke first and ask questions later. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right? You know, because we're all like, wow, look at that. And he's like, no, rebuke that thing. We know where it's coming from. It's not coming from Orion, Octorus, or the Pleiades. It's calling from, coming from the fallen realm. Rebuke first, ask questions later. Again, uh, I'm going to remind you, be not deceived. We see in Matthew 24, And he sat upon the Mount of Olives, and disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. We see in Matthew 24, 11, Many false prophets shall arise, and shall deceive many. You getting the picture? Deception's coming. All right? Matthew 24, 24, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And when it comes to mainstream media, there is a Nephilim agenda at work to program you to try to, to, you know, to accept this thing that's coming. There's a movie that came out um, called Paul, and it's not the Apostle Paul. It's a comedy movie about a little gray alien named Paul, who's basically, in the movie, like the Apostle Paul uh, was to the Gentiles, this alien gray Paul to the earthlings. Now, I want you to pay attention to some of the things I'm going to show you in this clip. Some of the memes, as they call them, that's right in your face of what they're trying to get you to believe. Oh, thank you. I got it at my church. It's Jesus shooting Charles Darwin. Why would Jesus want to shoot Charles Darwin? He gets up his glass from his theory. God created the earth in six days, and on the seventh day, he rested. Really? Um, all right, well then, uh, please explain how something as complex as the human eye simply just comes into being. Oh, don't give me that old irreducible complexity crap. What are you talking about? Evolution, baby. Oh, blasphemy. Oh, yeah. Well, Nothing that you can say or do can shake my belief or faith in the sure and certain knowledge that God made heaven and earth and created us all in his own image. Oh, okay, his own image. Well, I got a question. Okay. Um, Ruth. Hello, Ruth. Um, would you like a cup of tea? Where am I? <coughs> hey, look who's awake. Stephen! Stephen! No, no, we're, we're sorry, okay? We're sorry. We're not going to make you, I promise. And we'll let you go just as soon as we can. You've been defeated by an agent of Satan himself? He's evil! Something right here, come on! No, no, he's not, he's not evil, he's just a bit rude. You know, we're, we're trying to help him get home. Um, he, he's from another world. There's, a, there's, there's only one world, our world, the world that our God the Father created! Hey, if it makes you feel any better, my existence only just proves traditional notions of the Abraham of Judeo Christian God, as well as all one world theology. That's all I meant. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Hey, these people! Ruth, just listen to me for one second, please, if you could just calm down. What did you do to him? I had to stretch my collective knowledge and experience to be attacked by a second kinetic bridge. So everything that I have been told my whole life is just a big fat lie. So there's no heaven. No hell, no right, no wrong, no sin. I can drink. Yeah, I can fornicate, maybe. I can curse. Oh, yeah. Marty, 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 What do you got there, by the way? Do you mind if I take a look at it for one second? What does it say in the Old Testament? An eye for an eye? Wait, I don't... It's okay. 
You can trust me. Um, no. I... Just have a little faith, okay? parks over our city and says, hi, we're the Anunnaki. Remember all the megalithic structures? You know, the landing sites there at, uh, you know, the Nazca lines of Peru? Oh, Jesus? Yeah, we got the hologram. Check it out. He's one of us. What do you think? Right? And they're going to cure all our illnesses and disease and, you know, what, what's, what's going to happen to the average evangelical who has no clue about any of this stuff? Do you think it might shake their faith a little bit? I think it's going to shake their faith a lot of bit. And again, I don't tell you or show you these things to scare you. I'm just trying to show you what's out there and to equip you. But I don't want to leave on that note. You know, it is true. In the last days, Lucifer is coming down. We see in Revelation 12, 12, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them, but woe to the inhabitants of earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Yeah, the devil's angry. But you know what? Greater is he that's in me than he that's coming, and he that's in the world. Right? We've got to understand the hope that lies within us, and the power that lies within us. And I'm going to encourage you not to fear, okay? 2 Timothy 1, 7, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. John 16, 33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. I'm not freaking out, not worrying about this stuff. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. First John 4, 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Do you believe that? I believe that. And I want to encourage more people to, to understand the things that I've talked about tonight, the things that I'm sure Randy's going to talk about, that I'm sure Doug's going to talk about. 
How do we get, you know, I don't know how many people are here right now, but there's 300 million people in this country. 70 billion people on the planet. How many of them are even remotely aware of any of this stuff? You know, I've been at some of these big prophecy conferences where there's 20, 30, 40 speakers there. Even at those conferences, max, maybe 1,000 people show up. That's a drop in the bucket. 300 million in the country, 7 billion on the planet. And Jesus said there's a great deception that's coming. So how do we reach the masses? Well, I believe, for me, the, the mission that God has given to me, I can't speak for anybody else, but is this TV series, Seed. And I call it Seed for a reason, because I'm just going to be planting seeds. I'm going to write it from a biblical worldview, but serve it on a secular palette. So it's not going to be preachy. I don't want to preach to the choir. You know, there are plenty of Christian filmmakers making movies that preach to the choir. You know what? The choir needs preaching to, too. So I'm thankful for that. You know, God bless them. I hope they continue to do the work that they're doing, because they are doing good work. But I want to reach the world. I want to reach the people that are watching the X-Files, that are watching Fringe, that are watching V, the event. I mean, how many shows can we mention? Right, I, I pitch it as Lost meets Battlestar Galactica wrapped up in an X-File. <laughs> how many of you saw the TV series Lost? Anybody? Uh, my wife and I used to make fun of people who watch Lost because we didn't, you know, you're lost watching Lost if you didn't start from the beginning. You know, if you pop in like, you know, episode 8, you know, <laughs> season 2, you're completely lost, you know. Um, but... And they used to have lost parties. Like, my friends that watch it, they all get together and have lost parties. I'm like, man, I thought Trekkies were bad. These people are, and I'm a Trekkie. Um, so we got season one on box set, and the Nielsen Report says the average American watches four to five hours of TV a day. Now, that, was, that statistic did not apply to my wife and I until we got the box set of Lost. Because they put four episodes on one disc, and you're like, you know, watch it, you're like, and they always left on a cliffhanger, you know, and you're like, you want to watch another one? Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Next one. <laughs> we look at the clock, it's like 2 o'clock, it's a work day, you know. <laughs> you want to watch another one? <laughs> it was not uncommon for us to watch all four episodes of one disc in a work day. Um, and J.J. Abrams was brilliant in creating that series because he showed you a lot of stuff, but he never told you anything. And it drove you crazy. Those of you who watched it, you know, what's the smoke monster? What's the deal with the foot statue? And you're always trying to figure out all this stuff. They would show you stuff, but never tell you anything. But they would do some really cool things. How many of you saw Lost? Two people? There was a character named Echo who was introduced in the second season who had a walking stick. And a lot of times it would just show Echo carving something into his walking stick. And then every now and then they would cut to what he's doing. But they'd show it for like all of two seconds. You know, it's like one, one thousand, two, one second. Oh, you missed it. Now, when it's on DVD, you can rewind and hit pause. And what they did, what, what Echo was doing, was carving scripture references into his stick. So, you know, those geeks out there like me who will hit rewind and hit pause, what did that cause me to do? What's he writing? Okay, he wrote it. What was that? Second Timothy, what? Scripture says his word, word will not return void. If I can get anybody to get in this thing, that's all I need to do. His word's not going to return void. Right? The, cr the creators of the lost got people to go to their Bible by showing a guy carving in a stick. And never had some dude with a bad southern accent going, they're going to find a chance, find a chance. <laughs> Echo was carving what the Bible said. They did a lot of that, and if you watch the show, they did a lot of that, especially in the first three seasons. Not so much in the later ones. Okay? So Steve's going to have the mystery and intrigue of, sh of a show like Lost. Where I'm going to put stuff like, out there like that that's going to cause people to go look stuff up for themselves. And if you, savvy Christian, are paying attention when your unsaved friends are watching that, you can then go water that seed and maybe have the enormous privilege of harvesting. Okay? We're going to create the venue for you to do that. Battlestar Galactica preached, whether you know it or not, that the creator of Battlestar Galactica was a Mormon. It was loaded with Mormon themes. The 1970s version and the remake that they did in 2004. Okay? Science fiction is beautiful because people go into it suspending their disbelief. So if you turn your disbelief filter off, that means you're open to believing whatever I want to tell you. 
That's why the secular humanist ideas that Gene Roddenberry was all about permeated our society because of multiple series of Star Trek in like nine or ten movies. Okay? Uh, and the alien agenda and government conspiracy, New World Order type themes that made the X-Files so successful for nine seasons and two movies. So I want to take the elements of all three of those shows, what made those shows successful, wrap it up in a package that is culturally relevant but teaches biblical principles. Okay? They call it seed. Our mission statement for seed is to plant seeds that will enable people to understand the time we are living in and to walk in the power of the kingdom that comes only through a relationship with Jesus Christ. But it's going to take all of us to do this. God's laid this huge vision on me. It's like 72 episodes, $72 million total. I wonder how I'm going to pay my rent in a two-bedroom apartment most of the time. But you know what? God doesn't call the equipped. He equips the call. We've been called. Now we're waiting for the equipment. Um, I'm just going to show you a real quick trailer and uh, call it a night. I, uh, I'm working on a trailer. And uh, back in 2009, 2010, I created a, a concept animation. We didn't have the money to go shoot a live action version, so I just created a concept animation. It will be live action. Uh, but in the last few years since I originally did that, uh, we've got some new equipment. I got a 3D HD camera, which I'm itching to use. I haven't used it yet. Um, but we're uh, uh, getting actors together. We're going to recreate this trailer as live action, hopefully before the end of this year. So you can pray with us on that. Just a quick uh, backstory on this. I talked about the 200 watchers that landed at Mount Hermon in the days of Jared. I talked about Azazel. Azazel is the worst of the worst. He's buried in a cave somewhere in the wilderness. I got to think, and our troops were poking around in Iraq in 2002, before we went there, you know, uh, in, uh, in 2003. And I imagined, what would it be like if, these, if some troops were digging around looking for weapons of mass destruction, and they inadvertently come across the cave of Dudio? And they experience a season. So that's what you're going to see. That's, that's sort of just a teaser of that. Now, it's, it deals with time travel, deals with all kinds of stuff, but here's, the, here's what we have so far. It's a work in progress. Okay? My unit was sent to Iraq looking for weapons of mass destruction. On the night of Christmas Eve, we found one.
go to the networks. We can't go to ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, Sci-Fi Channel, any of that, because they'll censor us, they'll control our content, and they can have the ability to cancel us prematurely and own the rights. We can't do that. So we're trying to do this basically as a grassroots effort. Uh, we believe that you know God calls us to it, he'll make a way for it. And we're doing what we can with what we have until he brings the rest. Um, but pray, pray for us, pray with us on this. You know, just to, I'll give you a little insider information, then I'll have to kill you. Um, <laughs> that Morse code at the end of it was Jesus Christ as Lord. Um, the logo, seed, has the two E's facing each other. If you put the two of them together, it's the theos. It's the Greek word, the, the first letter of God. Okay? It's showing God is at the center of seed. These are the kinds of seeds that are going to be planted all over the place. And it's the kind of thing that, you know, sci-fi people, they dig. They have conventions. They have meetings. They get together and get married in Klingon. You know, they, they get into it. And that's what we want. We want people to get into it so they get into it. God's word will not return void. And we hope, it's our hope, that through this venue we'll be able to take the stuff that you're going to hear this weekend out to the masses in a way that they can receive it. So, again, pray with us on that, and thank you so much for coming. Thank you.